Uh, hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Anna Marzik smith and today I'll be giving you an introduction and product overview of Argo's IP paging and alerting endpoints. Our agenda for today covers an overview of Argo Solutions as a company, a bit about ProView and Argo's relationship, and then we'll dive into product overview of their audio alerters and speakers, visual alerters and paging adapters. So the idea behind today is keep it really basic. I just want to give you an overview of how they work and how simple they are to use. Uh, I feel like there are a lot of people out there selling IP handsets but tend to shy away from a fuller solution, mainly because they don't know how it works. But ultimately, the fact that it's all over IP and running on the same system um, makes it very similar to handsets and it's easy to use. So not as scary as some may think, and hopefully today is going to show you that. I'll also go through a couple of usage scenarios as well, just to give you an, an idea of how you can put it all together. And plus, as always, there'll be some time for questions and answers at the end. Just before we start, if you do have any questions, feel free to type them in. Uh, there's a speech bubble on the right hand tab and I will do my best to answer. If there's anything I'm not able to answer, I will just ask for your details and I'll come back to you separately. So a bit about Argo. Argo was founded in 1968 and is based in Canada. Uh, so far, over 4 million devices have been shipped with Argo, Nortel and Avaya branding. They specialise in SIP and multicast endpoints for paging, notification and security. All of the speakers and paging devices support wideband audio for high audio quality. And they're all suited for all sorts of environments such as education, healthcare, uh, manufacturing, retail, and many more. Proview have been selling Argo since 2011, so it's been eight years now, and we buy our products directly from Argo in Canada. We have a close relationship, so we work closely together with their technical team and their channel sales manager to really ensure that we know the products well. We've done the odd trade show together, I also did Channel Live two years ago. Um, sadly, we've not been able to join up for today's webinar, but we have done in the past. You'll find that Proview can provide a high level technical support on Argo, but you've also got the option of going to Argo directly. So they're really helpful um, with our resellers. So if you do need that advice, you've got both options there. Uh, Proview can also provide a high level of pre-sales technical advice to help you put the solutions together. So everything that we go through today, if you come across any solutions or sites that you're working on that you think could use these, then just give us a call and um, we'll walk through how it works and help you put the solution together for your customer. Starting with the audio SIP alerters and speakers, um, so they're all network based and it's a fully scalable solution for any size room, building, campus or enterprise environment. Then you've got a variety of speakers, paging adapters and strobes. All the endpoints are PoE and they register as a third party SIP endpoint either on hosted cloud or an on-site PBX, and you've got support from Avaya, Broadsoft, Cisco, Digimasterisk, Metaswitch, Mitel, uh, NEC, and Polycom, just to name a few. Uh, but the bottom line is as long as the system that you're using supports third-party SIP devices, then you're good to go. The Argo 8180 is a SIP wall-mountable indoor speaker designed for voice paging, loud ringing, and emergency safety security notifications. So for example, if you've got phones in a loud factory or garage that you can't hear when it rings, then this can be used as a loud ringer or something to page into when you need to make an announcement. So the setup is really similar to that of an IP phone. You just give it a SIP extension and configure it through the web interface. And you can then add it to specific ring groups to alert the right calls. Or you could just dial into it if you want to make an announcement. For multiple speaker deployments, you don't need a SIP license for the additional speakers. So you, a single registered speaker can be configured to multicast to any number and mixture of the average speakers. So you've got one master and the rest all act as a slave. It's also PoE, so you don't need a power supply. And it's also got ambient noise monitoring. So this part is really clever. Um, it will basically change its noise level depending on the background noise. So if we go back to this factory example where we've put it in where we can't hear the phones ring, throughout the day it's most likely going to be on one of its top levels to be able to hear over all the noise. 
But once you turn off all the machines at the end of the day and the phone rings again, then it's not going to blast out really loud and break in your eardrums. It will detect that the background noise is quieter and it's then just going to ring at the appropriate level. It supports wideband audio as well and it's customizable. So it's already got audio files preloaded, which you can use, um, but you can also record and upload custom audio files. And then you can register up to 10 ring extensions to one speaker so it can act as an alerter for several telephones by configuring different ring groups for each registered extension. Argo have also just recently released version two of this product. So it's exactly the same as it's always been, but it's got upgraded hardware capable of running the latest security and encryption standards, um, such as TLS and SRTP, as well as ensuring uh, that secure communication with your hosted SIP providers. There's also an additional horn speaker to use as an add-on. So that's this um, big rectangular one down at the bottom of the slide. Uh, it's the 1186. Uh, so if you do need the 8180 to be louder, uh, then this works as an add-on additional speaker for that. Moving on, we've got the 8186. So you can almost think of this as the 1186, so the horn speaker we just saw, but with an 8180 built into it. So it's a standalone unit and it's a robust version. So internally, what you can do with it is exactly the same as the 8180, so everything we've just gone through, um, as is the same with all of the other Argo speakers. So it's the same on the inside, just different on the outside, depending on what it's designed for. So this particular one is a horn speaker and specifically designed for outdoor use. So it's IP66 rated, very suitable for all sorts of weather conditions, and it's extra loud, so suitable for high noise environments as well. Just like the 8180, you've got the ambient noise monitor again, so it's not going to blast out really loudly unnecessarily, only when needed. And it also supports multicast, so you can have just one SIP account and then multiple units registered. Here are two ceiling speaker options. So again, just like the 8180, internally but different on the outside. So you have register your SIP account and then with the support of multicast, you can have multiple units on one system. So these two are for ceilings. So we've got the 8188, which is the circular one at the top of the slide. And this one is specifically designed to be flush mounted. And then the 8189, the one with the square frame at the bottom, that one is designed to be surface mounted. So you've got that bit of flexibility, to, depending on what type of building you're working on um, and the abilities that you've got to install. And then again, we've got the wideband audio on these, which makes it easier to hear in noisy environments. So these tend to be quite good um, in schools or supermarkets where you need to be able to be heard over background noise, but you want the system to be tidying out of the way. So being ceiling mountable, they are discreet and the design is nice enough not to stick out. Sorry, I've just seen a question, so I'm just going to quickly read through that and see if we can answer as we go along. Bear with me one moment. Um, so I've just been asked if it's compatible with um, Ericsson LG IPEX. It's compatible with any system that supports third party SIP devices. Um, so that's that's literally all they are. Um, if you are unsure, um, then you want to speak to um, either your provider or whoever it is that you deal with, um, with the PBX that you're using. Um, you can always test a unit from us, but really you want to just make sure that they support third party SIP devices. So I'll move on to the next slide. Um, on the visual alerters, here we've got the 8128 strobe alerter. So these are high intensity LED lights, which gives you longer life than other xenon type strobes. So it's giving you more luminance with less energy. Like the 8180, you can assign it to a SIP account and with the support of multicast, can be deployed in any number of mass notifications. And in this one, you've got 16 configurable flash patterns with four color options and different levels of intensity. So all these options allow you to match the aggressiveness of the flash pattern to the application requirements. So in, in some cases you might want less intensity than others. And overall what this offers is a way for you to make alerts without the use of audio. So in, in an environment where you don't particularly want a loud ringer blasted out on the phone, for example, let's say in a restaurant, you don't want your customers to be sat there eating dinner and then hearing the phone ring loudly, 
Instead, you might have a light, a light that flashes in the back or on a low intensity under the reception desk, um, whatever works best. Um, being wall mountable and ceiling mountable, you've got some flexibility as well. Um, it can be suitable for outdoor use if you install it right. If you get it wrong, water will get in. So if you are thinking of using it for outdoor use, maybe just double check with us first so that we can make sure that you've got the right um, instructions. So I've just had a question asking, um, can we add several different Argo endpoints, including the visual alerters, to a single multicast, um, so the third party endpoints, um, license for all up to 10? The answer is yes. Um, so you've got, as long as you've got one that's registered to a SIP account, um, the rest can just configure to that. So you, and it, they don't have to all be the same. So you can have a mixture of 8180s, the strobe alerters, um the outdoor 8186 paging call um and yes you can you can you can have up to 10. so i've just had one more question as well um are they expensive because they're being imported so yes we do buy from canada um but i mean you know proview Proview tends to cover the cost of all the deliveries. The only thing that that might be a slight, or I don't want to say an issue, but the only thing that of them being imported is that the lead time when we get stuff in is a little longer than UK, because obviously it's not next day. Uh, so it usually takes us a couple of weeks, but we tend to keep plenty of everything in stock. Um, but certainly price-wise, it's um, you know it's 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 no different to if you were buying directly from Canada. So moving on to paging adapters, um, before I go through the two units, um, just a few things. So most remember is that it's scalable from one to many and they're easy to deploy. And then it's flexible, you've got flexible zoning down to the individual speakers and it's easy to configure. And then being easy to configure means that it's also easy to reconfigure so you don't have to go down to site to make any changes. So just like with the IP handsets, you just access it remotely via the web interface. They also support mass notification, alerting and bell scheduling. Um, so it's like a little server. And then like the speakers, it supports wideband audio as well. So we've got two models in the IP paging adapters. Uh, the first one here is the 8301. Uh, so both of them can be used purely on an IP solution. So your cloud speaks to the 8301, the little server, which then speaks to your various algo alerters, um, whatever ones you've chosen. Or what's really great and what we see it used quite a lot in is with existing analog systems. So it enables analog voice paging systems, but it can also be used on the IP system. So it would sit between the cloud and the IP end, endpoints to function as a scheduler. Um, and it comes with preloaded files, but you've also got room uh, to add your custom audio files. And again, you can register up to 10 ring extensions on this one, um, so it can act as, alert, as an alert for several telephones. The 8373 is very similar, um, just with added extra feature, so it enables zoned voice paging this one. Um, so both of them are SIP endpoints that can interface to a traditional audio amplifier and set of speakers. But if you want to be able to have more than one set of speakers and still using just one amplifier, then this is where you can use the 8373. So it allows you to um, connect up to three sets of speakers via one amp. You can also connect both existing analog paging system to the IP platform PBX, but then also in conjunction with that, you can add additional IP speakers that are speaking directly to the platform or PBX. So you don't have to just stick with one or the other. If your customer's already got an analog system, great. Keep the amplifiers and speakers, ditch everything else and just stick the 8301 in or the 8373 paging adapter. And then if you want to expand in the future, you can do that with all the different options we've just gone through. So just to give you a bit more detail of how it works with the um, existing analog system, and hopefully this diagram will help a little bit. Um, so with the traditional analog paging, you 
got all sorts of components to it. So you've got a central integrated central amplifier, a dedicated amp, a paging amp, you've got your staging trunks, power supplies, all sorts of little bits of hardware, and it's quite complicated. And as we all know, the more complicated something is, the more things can go wrong. So if you do want to connect to the existing analog system via IP, then you've got two options. You can either go for this top option here, which is what a lot of people do, and that is to just stick an ATA in. So, I mean, that's okay, like it does the job, it works fine, but it still requires you to use the bulk of the setup. Whereas if you go with the um, Argo paging solution, you could just pop in an 8301 between the clouds and the amplifier and away you go. So none of the other messy bits are needed. This does the full job and it acts as its own little server. So benefits of IP paging and alerting. It's important these days to have a critical safety and security function. So you want something that has as few moving parts as possible as we just looked at. Um, so these products are secure. It's not easy to get into a hack to without doing a lot of work and giving you that secure functionality. You know, it's not like your traditional couple of bell wires that someone can just come and clip and stop them from working entirely. It's now a common infrastructure. Um, because uh, you're already using your voice and data and security network, you've just added then paging to it. And if you want to extend, you just run some Cat5 cables, plug it in and set it up via the web interface. You're not having to go and find out where the main wires come in, remove ceiling tiles, you know, potentially run wires from one ceiling to another. Um, and as we looked at before, it's really easy to configure and change remotely. So you could, for example, pop online to web interface and say, well, actually, I want this speaker to now um, bring on this ring group instead of that one, or I want it to play this ring tone instead of that one. Um, it's all done remotely and it's really easy to do. So they can be used in all sorts of environments, and I'm going to give you a couple of examples here. Uh, so we do actually quite a lot of school projects with some of our resellers. Um, so in a school, for example, you might want 8180 speakers in all the classrooms as you don't need something too loud. And then you could use the 8301 to schedule the announcements, for example, when it's time to change the next lesson and when it's lunchtime. And then you'll probably have the same in the halls. Um, probably won't need the additional horn, so I'd probably say go for the 8180. Um, and then if we look at the canteen, because obviously it's a bit louder than that, you'll probably want the 8180 um, along with that additional speaker just to make it a bit louder. Then in your playgrounds and your sports fields, you'll probably have the 8186, um, the outdoor horn speaker, uh, this IP66 rated. Um, so again, they can hear all the scheduled announcements. And then if at any point an emergency announcement needs to be made, so something that's not already scheduled, then the school receptionist or headmaster can just dial into the ring group from their IP phone and make the announcement. Also really suitable for retail. Um, so in a closed shop, for example, quite often they'll have music playing. Um, so you'd probably have the 8188 uh, ceiling speakers just to keep it tidy. Um, you wouldn't have as many announcements in a shop like this like you would in a school. Um, you may just have one at the end of the day uh, to give a 15 minute warning um, when the shop is closing. Um, and then again, if they want to make an emergency announcement, um, they can just do so by dialing in um, via, the, um, via their IP phone. You might also then have, um, so for the receptionist, um, again, they might not want their IP phone necessarily ringing. Um, so they might have that off entirely, maybe in the back and then have just the flashing lights either under their desk. Um, or somewhere else discreetly, so that again, it's not distracting the customers, but they're still being alerted on when the call's being made. Um, I've just been asked, what is the warranty on the devices? Um, so the warranty is one year. Um, probably you do a lot of work with Algo, so if you ever do have any issues, uh, then obviously you can come to either uh, Probe or Algo directly. Um, but it is one year that it comes with. But I'll, I'll be really honest with you, we have so few returns on the Algo products. Um, so I think generally you're OK. Right, I'm going to give you one more example. So and this is actually how we use it at Probe. So ours sits in our warehouse. 
Um, this isn't a picture of our warehouse. Ours looks very similar. Uh, it's almost as big as that. Um, but I was I was using the warehouse not for when the IP phones ring because they can actually hear those fine. Um, but we have it there for when the doorbell rings. Um, so on our intercom on the outside, we've got two buttons, one to ring the general office, you know, so just for normal visitors, maybe someone's coming in for a meeting. Um, and when that one rings, it rings all the IP phones upstairs in the main office. But then if the person at the other end of the door selects deliveries, it will ring the IP phones downstairs in the warehouse, but also the Argo and 8180 will ring at the same time with a loud sort of ding dong sound so that they know that the doorbell is ringing rather than just a call coming in on their phone. Uh, so they're going to get to it quickly, answer it, and when they answer it, they're speaking via the IP phone to the intercom, but the whole conversation is being broadcasted through the 8180, so other members in the warehouse can hear exactly what's being said. So if we've got this guy at the door saying, I've got 15 pallets, where do you want them, what do I need to do? Uh, whilst that's all going on, the other guys can hear this and they start getting the shutters open and other necessary equipment to take the delivery. So because the whole warehouse has heard what's going on, there's no need for information to be repeated or passed on. They just get on with it. And then likewise, if we ever need to speak to the warehouse over the speaker, which for us internally, it's rare because we tend to use it for messaging. Um, but when we have done in the past, even I've done it, I've just dialed in from my IP phone on my desk um, and, and just broadcast it over the 8180. So, Hopefully this has shown you um, that they are quite easy to use um, and hopefully today has given you a bit more of an insight of how it all works. I really want to stress how important it is that you give us a call if you think you may have an opportunity for something like this, but you're not quite sure. Um, like I said before, we can talk you through it and we'll help you from start to finish. You send us your site plans, tell us exactly where it is, um, you know, what they're looking for, and we can help you put the whole solution together. We've also got the ability to pre-provision um, and we can offer remote configuration support. So, you know, if you've agreed a time with us when you're there doing your install, we can be there on the other line to help you get everything configured. Um, uh, so, yeah, if you're still thinking like it's a bit too much, just just let us help you. And, you know, it's the same as the phones. Once you understand it, that's it. And you'll be wondering why you've waited so long to get into it. <laughs> but hopefully anyway. Uh, but if you do have any more questions, obviously we've answered a few already, um, but please feel free to ask now and I'll do my best to answer. Um, if you can't think of anything now, but something does pop up later, don't shy away, do get in contact. Our email address is contact at proby.co.uk and our telephone number is there, it's 01484 840 048. Or feel free to get in touch directly if you want to speak to me, it's just anna at proby.co.uk.